Hello everybody and welcome to your next C++ Made Easy HD tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be uh, I'm going to be introducing the string class okay so uh, we've been using strings since the very beginning of when we started learning uh, C++ whenever we use C out whatever we typed in here was a string and probably already knew that probably you didn't know that right but uh that is a string anything that has a double quotation whatever and has text in it followed by uh an, or has characters in it followed by another double quotation is considered a string in c plus plus now a string is kind of like a char, uh, a char or a character uh in a way but it is it's like a char but a group of chars put together so remember when we learned about uh character arrays or char arrays uh think of a string as a char array but it has its own separate class for it and the string class uh there is some things that i'm going to teach about the string class that you should memorize right uh you should get familiar with right People underestimate, as I did when I started learning C++, I really underestimated uh, the use of strings, but strings become very vital, uh, especially when it comes to editing text files or editing anything uh, in your program, right? When you're using strings, manipulating the string class can be the difference between a pro programmer and a beginner programmer, right? Just the way you handle things, you make stuff easier and not easier. Okay, so first of all, uh, we've already learned about classes and we already learned what a constructor is in, an, in a class, okay? So, uh, we have, we've already utilized strings, right? And uh, whenever we created a string and we call it line or whatever, we can set it equal to a value, okay? We can store anything in it. Well, the string class also has a constructor. As you can see, it has a bunch of overloads, right? But we're not really concerned for all that. Uh, we will we'll get into probably get into those stuff later but in the constructor we can input a string for it and uh it will add it in just like we just said line equals something else right so uh that is one way that we can add a value to it and to show you that i'm not lying i will output this to the screen and let me run this So as you see, it says the text that I inputted in there uh, as well. Okay, and uh, there is, uh, let's see, for example, let's check out another string function. Well, actually, before I even do that, uh, I said that strings are like are like arrays in a, in a way, right? And uh, they are. So think of this as a character array. So whenever we made a character array or something like that, uh, we can we could index by calling whatever the character was, and do that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? And take out a single letter. Well, we could do the same thing with uh, the string class as well. So if we put zero in there, then we will take out the first index within line. So instead of printing out the whole line, in this case, we would just print out the T. And to show you that I'm not lying, we will run this one more time. So as you can see, it printed out T instead of printing out the whole word itself. So we can print out different indexes within uh, the, the string itself. Now another function that we can use to do this as well is we can use the at function. And if we say at zero, it's the same as calling in an index like so. So if I say line dot at zero, then sorry, when we run this, we will get the same letter T. So you can use either method you want. I rather the first method because I feel like it's easier, but it's really up to you which one you would like to use. Now, I believe in the last tutorial, I used uh, the strlen string length function, right? And this is a C type function. It is not a C++ function. So uh, if you ever want to find the length of a string, what we do is we call line.length, okay? 
and I believe this is yes this is a function okay so what we have to do is we're gonna display the length and we'll say end out let's just run this so as we can see the length is four so this is one two three four right so it's four letters so we can do that to find out the length of uh, of a string why would this be useful it could be useful in in a lot of situations like uh, you can replace it str length function with line dot length which I've said um, in the previous function in the previous tutorial uh, say you want to do something like I don't know if you want to cycle through all the letters within the string right you could easily call line dot length and then we could cycle through all the elements in the string so what if we say see out line and we'll print out the index of the line and after that we will add in three spaces for whatever reason okay so when we run this program it will print out each letter individually followed by three spaces right so if you ever need to scroll through an uh, a, a line or a string or anything then you can do so with the string the length right or uh, say you want to locate something within the string, locate a, a letter or something in the string, right? Then if you loop through it, you could say if uh, line whatever, if line i is equal to s, or in this case, we'd have to put a character. Because well, whenever we use a, whenever we're finding an index within a string, then we have, it is considered a character, not an actual string element. A string is a group of characters. So if we're only checking for one character, then we have to check for, we have to use single quotations. So we can say that if line i is equal to s, then we uh, see out that line. So if we run this again, it will only print out the s, right? So there's a bunch of different things that you can u utilize using all of these, and uh, this is just the scratch. This is just scratching the surface of strings. There is so much things strings can do, but I'm just gonna end that as an introductory note. Uh, so just a quick review on what they are. So a string is a collection of chars or a collection of characters, right? That is what it is. So if you want to index them individually using this index then it is considered a character not a string anymore so you're finding the value of a character right but the whole word as a whole is considered a string so i'm going to uh, end that overview there and i hope you enjoyed this and we'll learn much more about strings in subsequent tutorials thanks for watching don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and that's it so bye for now